Now the next thing that we're going to get to is called gain and priority. Now this is where the AS3 Act stuff actually starts to occur. So we'll open that screen and you'll see again you have roll, pitch, and yaw. As you'll remember, we're going to leave flight mode 1, AS3X functions turned completely off. So for roll, pitch, and yaw, flight mode 1, we're going to have everything zeroed out. Notice at the bottom of the screen, we have the boxes that show what those values are. And let me go through that real quick. We have three different types of gain. We have rate gain, we have heading gain, and we have priority gain. What rate gain is, rate gain is a conventional gain um, that corrects only during motion. So this is a conventional gain that um, you know, most aircraft, uh, helicopters and so on have been using for years. We have another function called heading gain. What heading gain does is it actually um, uses hysteresis and it actually tries to maintain an attitude. So with rate gain, if you have a force that's trying to displace the airplane, say for example a wind, what it does, it acts like a damper. Um, it doesn't hold position, but it resists um, tr uh, forces which try to move the aircraft from its intended flight path, but it won't return it back to its original position. Heading gain will constantly try to maintain that exact heading. And then you have a function called priority. What priority does is it actually reduces rate gain as you displace the um, surfaces. So if I have 100% priority, and if I displace on aileron, for example, and if I move my stick to the ends, it actually will turn the gate rate gain off proportionately such that when I reach full aileron travel, I'll have no gain at all. So for example, if I have a high rate gain and no priority, what will happen is it will reduce my aileron um, rate if I have it set on ailerons, and I won't get the roll rate that I want. So in order to gain the roll rate back, I put priority in. We'll explain that a little more in detail when we're actually setting up the priority and how that works. So again, roll uh, for flight mode one, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to have any gain in there. So for flight mode two, however, that's going to be my fly around mode. Now here's an important thing to understand. Every airplane is going to require its own gain setting to be optimized. Now how do you optimize the gain setting? Well, you can really only do it through flight. So keep in mind that the size of the surface, the speed of the servo, the geometry of the servo, and the servo horn all ha has an effect on where that appropriate gain setting is. So if the gain setting is too high of a value, you'll get oscillation. So as the aircraft flies through the air, the aircraft will oscillate. And this is the faster you go, the more of a tendency to oscillate will occur. So if you're flying along and you see the airplane in roll oscillate or in pitch or in yaw oscillate, that means the gain's too high. How do you know if the gain's too low? If the gain's too low, you don't achieve the stability that you desire. So this is especially true with rate gain. Now heading gain, how do you know if you're too low or too high? If your heading gain's too high, you'll also get an oscillation, just like we talked about. If the heading gain's too low, then the aircraft won't maintain heading very well on that particular axis. Uh, so for example, if I roll into knife edge and I, my heading gain is too low, then it won't hold that high pitch attitude. It'll fall off. If the gain's too high, it's going to oscillate. So um, after you fly the airplane for several times, you'll get a pretty good feel for how this works. When you start to see it oscillate, you'll know you're too high, and that's when you flip to that flight mode one, you know, get it out of there because it can become dangerous. If the aircraft starts to oscillate aggressively, you can actually strip servo gears, you can you know, screw up control linkages, and so on. So with an airplane like this, it's a very stiff airplane, you have some very quick responsive servos, and you have some very large control surfaces. So I know from experience that the roll gain on this particular airplane needs to be pretty low. In fact, I'm going to start out with a roll gain setting of 15%. So, um, and in fact, with some of these aircraft, you know, it could even cause an oscillation even at those low rates. So 15% for my fly around for uh, normal flying around. So heading gain, for my normal fly around mode, I'm not going to use any heading gain on roll. I'm going to save that for my 3D uh, effects and we'll explain when we get to flight mode 3 how to set that up. So my roll gain, uh, for rate gain is set to 
Um, in another section, we're going to talk about absolute and relative. For now, we're going to leave this on absolute, meaning whatever value you put in the program is the gain value you're going to get. So I'm going to get out of that. Now I'm going to go to flight mode 3. Flight mode 3, I'm going to use this only for hovering. So when you're hovering, the airplane has very little airspeed. So because of that, you can have a much higher gain setting. So I'm going to set this airplane up such that I'm going to pull it into hover, like so, and the then when I pull it into this position, then I can flip to flight mode 3, and that will turn on this high gain setting. So flight mode 3 only, I'm going to turn that up to 40% gain. The other thing that I'm going to do, that's rate gain. I'm also going to turn my heading hold gain up to 40% gain. Now notice, it's important to understand that heading hold is only turned on right at center. So when you're right at center, um, heading hold is active. Anytime you displace the stick from center, you no longer have heading hold. So there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, you only need heading hold when the stick is at center. If the stick's not at center, you don't want it to hold heading. Number two, if you did have heading hold on when you displace the stick, um, then the airplane would always try to get back to its original heading, and in some cases with aircraft, that would cause us, the airplane to snap or depart from its normal flight path and could cause a crash. So that's the solution. Um, we have heading hold right around center. It works great for the appropriate um, aerobatic, aerobatic um, maneuvers, such as hovering. In fact, it's great for learning to hover. It's also great for flying like hands-off knife edge and some unique um, things like that. So keep in mind, flight mode three in this case is intended for hovering only. In fact, if I had this much gain and I'm flying along at full straight and level speed, the airplane will oscillate. It would be very dangerous to fly, so be careful when you're doing this. So in any case, there's roll. Now I'm going to go and do pitch. So for flight mode one, I'm not going to do anything. Remember, that's my home position. Flight mode two, I'm going to put in about 20% gain. No heading gain, because that's my fly around mode. Flight mode three, I'm going to go to 40% and 40% heading gain. Okay? Now, do the same thing with yaw. Yaw, flight mode one, nothing. Flight mode two, not heading, but I'm going to go to right mode, about 40%. Uh, no, no heading. And then flight mode three, I'm going to do 50%. And in the center. Again, this is a very active airplane, so my gains are pretty low, especially for my fly around mode. Um, if you have an airplane with small control services, for example, if I was doing this on a trainer or a scale airplane, my settings would be much higher because the, author the authority of the control surfaces is much less. So it requires um, uh, that you use a lot more gain in order to gain the stability necessary. So um, now that we've done this, I'll exit the gain screen. Those functions will be stored. And now I'll be able to switch. So I flight mode one, I have control and I rotate, nothing moves. Flight mode two should give me some motion, and it does. You can see that the, everything's correcting. And then flight mode three, I have heading hold on. And now you can see, and I have a much higher gain rate. You can see the surfaces are moving. See, they're moving as I go. So those are the fundamentals of setting up gain. Now what's very important on that first flight is that, of course, start off, generally I would recommend starting off in that flight mode one and get the feel of the airplane and then flip to flight mode two and, you know, do it fairly high and in a safe position. Watch for any of the surfaces to oscillate. You know, we've set them su sufficiently low and that you need to start low and um, then you'll be able to, you know, see if you have enough gain, if you don't have enough gain, um, and you'll be able to tweak that on further flights. There's also a function on this gain screen it's, that's called and it's in each one. On the bottom right hand side it says ABS, which stands for absolute, and relative, which is REL. What absolute means, and that's what's highlighted and defaulted, is the values that I put in for each of those gains, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. Relative, there's a function that we've incorporated in the transmitter that actually allows you to adjust the gains from the transmitter. We're going to devote the next section to that particular relative function so you can actually set the gains up 
in flight for each flight mode while you're flying and the gains will actually be displayed on your transmitter. Um, we've devoted an entire section to that because it's a very powerful tool to allow you to tune and adjust your airplane. It's also somewhat um, complex and, and it's important to understand how it works. So in the next section, we'll show you how to set up the relative.